Hi and welcome to our 16th test and measurement video. Today we'll look at the use of cursors in the amazing LaCroix Wave Surfer 3024 oscilloscope. This instrument has a large clear touch screen and extensive cursor capability. As in any modern full featured oscilloscope, there are grid lines electronically superimposed on the display. They cross the X and Y axes and permit the user to estimate time and amplitude values. But if you take full advantage of the cursor functionality, measurements will be more precise. We will see how this is done. To get started, we'll need a signal in the display. A good way to proceed is to connect one end of a BNC cable to the wave source auxiliary output on the rear panel. Connect the other end to an analog channel input on the front panel. Then, press Wave Source. The available waveforms are shown at the bottom of the display. As in most oscilloscopes that have an internal arbitrary function generator, sine wave is the default. For it to display in a meaningful way, press Auto Setup. There is the sine wave. We'll explore the cursor functionality. To start, hit cursors in the menu bar at the top. A drop-down menu gives you some choices. Incidentally, we have been taking advantage of the touch screen, but some users prefer the mouse. A standard computer mouse with a USB cable can be plugged into one of the two USB ports on the front panel or into one of the two USB ports on the back panel and you can click on-screen icons and menu items. The cursor's drop-down menu has some simple choices off, horizontal or time cursors, vertical or amplitude cursors or both. Additionally, a window can be opened with more extensive options. The cursors can be easily moved by dragging them with the mouse. Notice that there are two windows in the display that are associated with these cursors. The window in the lower left corner corresponds to changes in position of the horizontal lines that measure amplitude. These values are measured in millivolts. The top horizontal line in the display correlates to the third row in the left-hand window and also to the bottom row, labeled delta Y, which means change in millivolts. The bottom horizontal line in the display correlates to the fourth row in the left-hand window and again to delta Y. The vertical lines cross the x-axis, bracketing portions of the time base so that it can be measured. It is instructive to move these cursors with the mouse, watching the values change in the window at the lower right portion of the display. If we press the math button that is located between the vertical and horizontal knobs, the math functions window appears. If we then navigate to Fast Fourier Transform, or FFT, an interesting trace appears below the conventional sine waveform in the time domain. The y-axis represents amplitude, now measured in decibels and corresponding to power. The x-axis has changed, no longer measuring the passage of time. Instead, it now represents frequency. Since the sine wave is a pure signal without harmonics, the FFT trace has a large spike at the left of the display. The reason it is at the left rather than at the center is that negative frequency values are not part of this scenario. The irregular trace across the bottom of the display is the noise floor. The oscilloscope is reading a very low power level and that is a consequence of random molecular motion and minute amounts of static energy. Thanks for watching. More videos on today's amazing oscilloscopes are coming soon. Check back frequently.